I finished the season last night. I just want to thank you for another uh, fun ride, you know, uh, a very violent fun ride. I'll say it like that. Um, so jumping in, Carlo, I'll be honest, I spoke to you over a decade ago for The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Oh. I did not, and I did not see this path on your horizon. <laughs> well, I did. Um, yeah, no, it's, it, yeah, no, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, uh, different <laughs> than the source of the apprentice. Um, before we get started, um, I have to ask you as a fan of Narcos, as someone who's seen all the episodes, it is every three years you sort of do a different version of Narcos. And I'm just going to ask uh, point blank, uh, what's the next one? Uh, we don't know. There, there aren't any plans, honestly. Um, there, uh, yeah, there, this is this is sort of the end of the ride, certainly for now, at least there's nothing um, in the works. But, you know, unfortunately, the drug trade isn't going anywhere. So um, obviously, the possibility of, of other iterations exists. But but for now, um, you know, this is it. And, and the way that I think we went from Colombia to Mexico, and certainly, you know, with Chema, who sort of bridged both series started with Colombia in season three, and then into Mexico, we kind of felt like we were telling you know, sort of a cohesive story with Colombia and Mexico. They were sort of siblings um, as we saw it. So it felt like um, a nice place to, to sort of wrap it up with, with season three of Mexico. I, I, I totally get it. I just think that with the worldwide popularity for the series, that'd be, you know, it'd be for me surprising if, if Netflix was like, yeah, let's just call it a day, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll see, I suppose. Yeah, I know. It, it's you never want to repeat yourself. And I think that was sort of, you know, um, really important to us as storytellers this season. Um, but yeah, no, I hear you. And I, I don't disagree. There are certainly other stories, I'm sure, out there. Uh, Jose, when you got involved in this series, I, I've loved watching your arc from the beginning to where you are to where it ends. But did you have any idea when you signed on what ultimately your role was going to be or was it sort of like oh this is a cool show let's, let's do a little bit you know let's do a little i had no idea steven i actually auditioned for a different character and uh and my brother said uh you you just got the part but not the one you auditioned for and i said oh great i'm gonna be like cop number three and uh and they said no you're gonna be amado carrillo and i said oh my god okay and and my brother said and if and, and if they're introducing amado carrillo in narcos colombia they have to talk about Mexico if they keep doing the show. So, um, yeah, my brother saw it. I didn't, but I'm uh, very thankful and very grateful for uh, for everything that's happened to it. Uh, for both of you, I love learning about the behind the scenes or the making of a series or a movie. I just love, you know, learning that stuff. What do you think would surprise fans of Narcos to learn about the actual making of the show? I, probably, I don't know, probably how boring it is, or I don't know. I mean, film production is is, is a grind, you know, and um, I think that, uh, you know, we've, we've had, um, we've been lucky to have really the, a lot of the same cast and crew for a long time. So we've got really strong department heads who are able to routinely kind of pull off these incredibly challenging set pieces, but in, you know, a sort of daily basis. Um, but I don't know. I mean, Chema's there more often than I am. He, he would probably have a better sense of, of life on set. It's um, it was it, it was a tough uh, season because of, of the whole COVID uh, nineteen pandemic. Uh, it was really weird to just stop, and then nine or ten months later, um, you know, restart everything. Uh, you try to keep concentrated and keep you know with 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 the you know the attitude and and the whole thing in the back of your mind, but it's it's always hard to. You know, to just keep 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 doing it uh, so much, uh, so many months afterwards. But I have a funny story uh, about the um, I don't know if it's funny though, but uh, about the the writers' room. Carlo invited me to LA to before we started the season uh, to just talk and and, and see where the Amado um, curb was going to. So I went there, and it was like you know just. Just pictures of everyone, uh, actors and the real characters and the storylines, blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly I turn around and I see the Oloyan characters right like next to me. And I look at them, I turn around to Carlo and I told him, do you know what? I used to carpool with those guys <laughs> every day. 
uh, when we went to school because I used to live in, in Tijuana and I used to carpool with the Narco Juniors that you see on, and, you know, in this season um, every day in TJ. So um, I just thought it was, you know, scary as hell, but, um, but a funny story. All. <laughs> yeah. And, and at the time, I'm sure you had no idea. Oh yeah, we did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. We knew, we knew who everybody was, right. but, you know, the complex thing is, um, you well, sort of have, didn't you have a, you told me a great story about or a story about like you would see like Ramon Ariano in like like nightclubs and stuff and it was like nightclubs you know, or or yeah parties and uh, yeah yeah I, I, you know the Tijuana everything was so close knit back in the nineties that that it was impossible for you not to run into these characters uh, like I said I, I used to carpool with with Alfredo. To, uh, to our high school in San Diego. And, uh, but he was like this really quiet type guy that didn't mess with anybody. Uh, he was really nice and funny and quiet. And then all of a sudden you would hear uh, horrible stories uh, three weeks later. So uh, it's, a, it's a very complex situation to, to, to live in those, you know, in, the, in that kind of society at that particular time in, in history. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I am curious uh, about the ending of the season, I've seen the whole show. Um, is that based on like fact, or is that a sort of? Do you know what I mean? I don't want to say yeah. it, but I want to. I'm curious. Can I? Um, I have. I, I interviewed with uh, people that were there uh, at the hospital, and uh, they told me that uh, that that uh, he wasn't it. Uh, yeah, because he was he was very smart way ahead of the curve. And it, yeah. it, when I when I saw the ending of the season, I'm like, oh, he totally did this. This is exactly, he pulled this off. I think so too. Uh, so my last thing for, I was just, I had to know. Uh, my last thing for you guys, what do you want to tease fans for the season? You go, Carlo. I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> well, well, no, I just think that for me, this is a, this season, the story of the, our final season is sort of um, the, this is a story of the 90s that kind of delivers the modern era of drug trafficking. This is sort of the season that basically delivers the world that we inhabit now. It's kind of the origin story of the world we live in now um, in terms of the drug trade. So for me, that was sort of like the narrative arc of this, this war that breaks out and sort of resets the balance of power and really delivers for better or for worse, um, the drug trade as we know it today. I'll stop it there and I'll just say, I really want to thank you guys for a lot of entertaining television. I like and, your heat uh, shirt. Say it again? You. I like your heat <laughs> shirt. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong with this movie. <laughs> I, I may have worn it specifically for this junket because you know, it kind of figures. Um, on that note, thank you guys so much. Have a great day.